Hello and welcome to Around the Air Force. I'm Staff Sergeant Mike Hutchinson. Thanks for joining us. The Air Force's new Chief of Staff, General Mark Welsh III, took command Friday in a ceremony at Joint Base Andrews. Staff Sergeant Shannon Ofiara has the story. In a ceremony at Joint Base Andrews, Maryland, General Mark Welsh III became the 20th Chief of Staff of the Air Force. Before General Welsh took the reins, outgoing Chief of Staff General Norton Schwartz was honored in a retirement ceremony recognizing his more than 39 years of faithful service. From his first day in August 2008 to his last day in office, Norty has been a wartime chief, leading our service during a time of great challenge. America's greatness depends on men like Norty Schwartz and Mark Welsh, who choose selflessly to serve this great country of ours. General Welsh, a 36-year Air Force veteran, has three main focuses. He said they will be an important part of the Air Force moving forward. I believe we need to stay consistently focused in three areas. Number one, win the fight. Today's fight, the one that starts next week, the one that starts next month or the one that starts next year. Number two, we have to strengthen the team. That's the Air Force team, the Airman family team, the joint team. And finally, we have to shape the future. And that will require innovative thinking and different approaches to problems. And it will require modernization. General Welsh also emphasized the need for airmen to understand the importance of the other services in joint operations but also said airmen should not underestimate the combat capabilities of their own service in winning today's fight. For the Air Force Broadcasting Service at Fort Meade, Maryland, I'm Staff Sergeant Shannon O'Fiara. The Colombian Air Force were new players during Red Flag at Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. Airman First Class Cody Griffith shows us how the training will improve future operations. For over three decades, Nellis Air Force Base has hosted dozens of partner nations during Red Flag exercises. Red Flag 12-4 was no exception and saw the attendance of a new participant as the Colombian Air Force, flying eight Kafir aircraft, took part in their first Red Flag exercise. The message that I want to pass on is that uh, we are glad to be here. We want to continue to come uh, back, so we're going to plan so that we can come again to Red Flag and we want to continue to uh, to learn of the uh, friendship, the professionalism, and the closeness that we have to the United States and want to continue to uh, improve that uh, relationship. Red Flag seeks to improve combat readiness and survivability by testing airmen with realistic threats and scenarios on the Nevada Test and Training Range, the largest contiguous air and ground space for peacetime military activities in the world. The lessons learned during this exercise will pave the way for future cooperation in the Caribbean. Airman First Class Cody Griffith, Nellis Air Force Base, Nevada. Starting this weekend, the Air Force will be on display in New York City as the Big Apple hosts Air Force Week. The four-day event features performances and demonstrations showcasing the Air Force. The Air Force Broadcasting Service will be there as well, providing updates throughout the event and broadcasting the opening ceremonies live on Sunday, August 19th at 1300 Eastern Time on both the Pentagon Channel and streamed on AFLINK. You can also stay updated on all the action on BlueTube, the Air Force's official YouTube page, and as always via Facebook and Twitter. Stay tuned to Around the Air Force for more updates as the event draws near. That does it for today's show. From the Air Force Broadcasting Service here at Fort Meade, Maryland, I'm Staff Sergeant Mike Hutchinson. Thanks for watching.